Go. Hey, Dom. Hey, Mike. What's up? <laughs> Not too much. Uh, yeah. Happy New Year. Happy 2024. Yeah. 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 This is actually our first one of the, uh, our first uh, movie talk of the year. So first that's kind of cool. Yep. Yep. And yep. Uh, we're, to celebrate. Yeah. But uh, we got a, we got a storm coming tonight. We're supposed to get maybe up to a foot here. So um, you're lucky to be where you are right now. <laughs> oh, I'm very happy to be where I am right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you. bad for you guys. Well, I, I, you know, like I'm, I'm not a, I'm not as big a fan of snow as I used to be. You know, when you're, when you're a kid, you're, it's like, ah, it's great, you know, but <laughs> not, not as much anymore. But um, so uh, we've got a movie to talk about. Indeed, I, I wonder what that movie could be. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so today we're talking about. The 1973 movie Paper Moon, directed by, uh, I'm Peter trying to think of his first Peter, name. Peter. Dar Peter. Peter look, look, look behind Dar me. <laughs> Peter Bob 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 I had to practice pronouncing that name. Yeah. Bogdanovich. So many times in preparation. Yes. Yeah, it is Bogdanovich. So Bogdanovich and starring both Ryan and his daughter Tatum O'Neill. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And um, and actually, um, Ryan O'Neill was kind of like uh, during like the probably the early to mid 60s. He was kind of like a rising up and coming hotshot. He was in Peyton Place and a bunch of other. Well, but other. I, I hear one of the reasons he took the role in this yeah. movie was because he was worried he was going to be typecast by Love Story. Right, right. Which actually, love story. Um, I, I don't know. There's there were people that really loved uh, that film, and I always like. I always thought, oh my god, love story. It's um, to me, it was one of the more boring films that I ever saw, and um, you know, it was. It's it's not a, it's not a film that like I really want to sit through. Mm -hmm. you know? It's yeah. I, I, I mean, I mean. Uh... I've never seen it. Yeah. Well, and don't rush from out. The little to... I know of it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I would want to see it. Yeah, it's um to tell you the truth, it's um it, it's it was it was like really considered to be like the, the the movie, the the hip movie to see back in the probably late 60s I guess when it came came out. But mm -hmm. um you know, it's um it was filled with clichés and just a lot of silliness. Um when you look back on it now, it's uh, it doesn't it doesn't to me it doesn't age well at all. Yeah, the, the, that and I'm actually going to include this movie, Paper Moon, right into something that I personally have termed the Christopher Marlowe effect. Really? <laughs> really? So so like yeah. um, a number of uh, I still read, but a number of years ago I was a much bigger reader than I am now. Yeah, yeah, and. I figured I had heard enough about the big sleep. Okay. Yeah. Then I would read it. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, the movie's great. <laughs> I have not read the book, unfortunately, but yeah. No, well, the, the book was horrible to me. Yeah. yeah. And the reason why is because when it first came out, it was so good. Yeah. That everyone copied it. Yeah. Yeah. So now, decades later when i read the book everything seems like cliches yeah yeah well and and that's that's probably that's probably very true like of a lot of like detective novels uh of that time because yeah they all kind of they all kind of were on the same you know it, it was the same structure of yeah. the you know but i'll tell you what made the big sleep to me is first of all the cast and then second of all the the snappy dialogue i mean it was it was just like a sharp movie that like when you watch it you're like man this is a great movie there's it's filmed beautifully it's i don't know like i said i'm a big fan of the big sleep so but, but, but um, like when i was watching paper moon yes you know there's a lot there's a lot of things that went on that are now fairly old tropes right and and it's hard it's hard to judge the movie right. on its own merit. Yeah. When I've seen so many clones of it. Right. But again, you do have to you do have to kind of 
put that all in perspective as far as um, it, it's it was groundbreaking or I, I wouldn't say groundbreaking, but it was it was fresh at its at the time it came out. It was not mm -hmm. like people. That's one thing that I never heard was people saying, oh, it's just like, you know, oh, brother, where art thou or whatever. It was. It, well, it, it's the thing like like when it first came out. Yeah, I'm not denying that it, yeah. it was fresh or even groundbreaking. To me, it's to me, it's. And, and the other thing that I like about this film um I'm a I'm a fan of movies that are about cons and con men. And this is to me, this is one movie that fits nicely into that genre. And um because they're definitely con people. And and uh and I love how I don't I I like this movie a lot. I'm not a fan of Ryan O'Neill, actually, at all. I think Tatum O'Neill was actually the real star of the movie. She was great. Tatum O'Neill blew this movie away. Yes, there was she no did. one that could touch her. No, and 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 this uh, this film would not have been the same if uh, it, they had had an. And actually, I don't know if you're aware of it, but they actually had a TV series. Jodie Foster was was in that one, but I did hear about that. And the only reason I'm bringing that up right now is because um, I I feel like had Jodie and I like Jodie Foster and she was great as a kid actor, but I think Tatum O'Neill for the fact. I mean, this was really one of her biggest roles. This and maybe. Little darlings were probably were probably what she's most well known for. This is this is the role she won an Academy Award yes. for at, at the youngest age at yes. that time. Yeah, ten, at that time, ten years she was, old. Yeah, and which she fully deserved it. She was great. I mean, she was amazing. Blew me away. Yeah, absolutely. And and with, uh, with no acting experience. No, that's what that's what really gets you on that is that no, she did not have. She did not have acting experience, and uh, plus she had to work with her dad. And you know, you can say what you want. Uh, everything I've heard about Ryan—it's one of the reasons why I'm not a huge fan of the guy. But uh, for everything I've heard about the guy is he's kind of a dick. <laughs> I mean, all of his kids grew up kind of screwed up. I mean, he knocked out his his uh, son's front teeth one time when they got into an argument. He he didn't seem to raise either one of them right. He was, you know, he's more concerned with chase and tail than he was about raising his kid you know yeah i'm, but, I'm yeah uh, i don't know what to think because i've heard so much hollywood gossip that that i always think two things right one is you don't get to be big yeah in that in that field without being a little bit of a dick probably but there's ones that are worse than others i think yeah and and two you Keanu can Reeves. Believe. Tom, I'll, I'll, I'll say Keanu Reeves. Everything I hear about that guy, I, I've never met him, but everybody that has met him or talks about him, uh, both in the industry and fans, have always said he's the nicest guy in the world, and he's managed to succeed. So, I'm and, just and that may be true, but but <laughs> yeah. number two, I barely believe anything. That's true. That's true. He I, a, I hear from that. <laughs> he could be a jerk, also, but. Um, but yeah, and that's Tatum O'Neill with the her Oscar. So uh which she like again, she fully, fully deserved that. But um, but no, um, what did what do you think of the film? First of all, I want to get your opinion. I found this film highly disturbing. <laughs> really? Really highly. Like yeah. I was I I left really really. I felt really bad for everyone in this film. Yeah. Well, I like I said, I <laughs> I don't I don't know I um I actually I I don't know I pro it's probably our different outlooks <laughs> but but like for me I actually felt that in some ways they found each other because uh and not that he was going to be the greatest influence on her <laughs> because he's a con I mean, I mean, let's, let's face it he's sort of a horrible person in this yeah movie. he will yeah absolutely but you know something she didn't have if you think about it, look at look at what got here. This is the this is the opening scene of the film. Yep. They're standing at the grave. He shows up. Um, and apparently him and him and her mother had had past flings. And it sounds like they met up more than once. But the other thing is, uh, it's pretty obvious that her mother was not the greatest person at all. No. She, she was a partier. She went with a lot of different dudes, which I'm not 
faulting her for that, but but uh, but she at the time that was considered scandalous, and so she was her she was known for her infamous <laughs> behavior, and uh, of which he was one of her many lovers, and so she dies leaving the kid with nothing. And with no one other than some relatives that are located distantly. And Ryan O'Neill shows up and basically gets kind of like pushed into and, and taking her to her destination. The the very first thing that disturbed me, you yeah. know, she shows up at her gravesite. Yeah. This little girl's mom is being put in the ground. Yeah. Well, everybody and, wanted to get rid of the kid. Right. Yeah. That's right. Really I, I mean, how horrible is that? Yeah. Uh, they send horrible. her away with some strange guy they've yeah. never even met. I mean, yeah, he could have been a pedophile. You know, no one, no one knew. And he's, they're like, can you take this kid? Like, you know, she's got some relatives. Uh, you know, it's, it's like, he could have, he could have just kept the kid and been molesting the kid or something. So, so, so right off the bat, like, it, like I don't know what the filmmakers were thinking, but how this does not immediately disturb the viewer, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but it's. It's the it's part of the plot of the film, so it's again it's <laughs> so so. I, I realize yeah. how like like this movie is filmed like it is a lighthearted romp. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In, in many and ways, so it I is. get it. Yeah. But if you look, you did say you watch fun film. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm I'm sorry. Go ahead. She did not shed one tear. Not a she there's no scene in which she appears sad. Yeah. Yeah. No, she looked she looked and this scene here, when she was at the gravesite, she looked more like she was lost. Um she's a she's a funny kid because she um she kind of was looking for something and it was like like a kid that is lost and doesn't have anything. And the first thing she starts saying to him right off is, are you my dad? And she and she keeps talking about how we got the same job, we got the same mm -hmm. bone structure. I mean, she's really into the idea of, are you my dad? And she wants him to be her dad. And that's part of the film that I actually thought was a kind of a sweet aspect, because even though he keeps saying, you know, like, I'm, I, I need to get you to your relatives, I want to drop you off, and... Um, and even at the end, he's, it's kind of like that. But he's, he, it's like, you know, I told you, you can't ride with me. He's saying at the end. And and then she says, but you owe me $200 still. And, and, and that's the thing. Like, I never see any emotion. I, I never right. see the, the sense. I never get the sense that she wants someone to love her. Right. I get the sense that she yeah. sees a meal ticket. Uh, I See, I didn't see it as just that. There's sweet little things. One of the things that was really, you missed it, I think, because there's a scene at the carnival and she really wants him to pose with her on that paper moon. Yeah. And he uh, is, he's, I think, uh, I think actually he's going into the, there's a girly show at the carnival. Yeah. He, I think he's making a second or third trip back in there or whatever. And um, which leads to him meeting somebody else later, but, but, Trixie, um, yeah. But but as far as the the she really wants him to take that picture, and she's really upset and disappointed it, when she and takes it, the picture, and, it, and and at the end she gives him that picture like when when he's dropped her off at her relative that she doesn't stay at. Um, when he drops her off there, she leaves the uh, envelope with that picture in his car, and it's you know it, to me that was one of the things because I think she really. She had really come to like think of him as a father figure for better or worse, you know. And, and and you're right. You're right. It's just it's too little. Like yeah. I, I have a feeling that, <laughs> that the filmmakers were trying to like walk the line yeah. between lighthearted road film yeah. and and something emotional. Yeah. And well, they, it, yeah. they should have focused a little more on the emotion because I just didn't feel it most of the time. Well, um, there's a couple of things about that. One is, I think with kid films, a lot of times 
they tend to either go too sappy mm. where, where it's where it's sugar saturation or um or they're just like something unbelievable and then the the other aspect that i would maybe throw into that is the relationship she has with him is very similar to his relationship with his daughter in real life as far yeah. as i could say um everything i read and saw in the press at the time because i mean she was kind of growing up you know i was growing up i was a kid when this came out and um, i remember you know reading whether it was tabloids or whether it was seeing stuff in the you know in the press all the time and scandals that were happening around you know him and and later her when she started getting into her teen and 20 years and stuff but but um he was not a good father and uh in in real life like a lot of hollywood people are or not i should say but um but no um the film is what it is like i said it's a to me it's a con game comedy and um and you're right she takes very very well to the um she's i mean he does not he really does not to give him credit he does not attempt to actually put her in the cons. That's he's trying to, he stops to sell a Bible to because for people that are watching this movie, that's what he does. Uh, he, his con basically it's a it's kind of a simple con for, for the most part. He shows up at he he reads the obituaries in the local towns that he's traveling through. He has a whole bunch of Bibles that he apparently can emboss with with someone's name, and he finds out. Uh, who has died recently and maybe has a widow or uh, you know widower and he uh, he shows up and he says oh this person bought a bible for you um, and and then they were like well they died and it's like whoa that's too bad because you know they they had this bible and they ordered the special edition and they, so on and so forth and he basically is trying to sell a bible a cheap bible for very big money talking about gold lettering and all that and one of the times when he's having trouble she just steps right in and 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 she's helping him out and she's extremely intelligent she it just is naturally fitting to the con so um, i, I yeah. mean i found that almost more disturbing <laughs> that, that that this pre-adolescent girl actually right. upped his game oh she did she's better than he is at at the con She's and actually how better. do you get that way at nine years old? And a lot of intelligence uh, and a, and the ability and a to lot read. Of trauma. <laughs> there are yeah, but yeah, that's probably very true. I think, and and that's an aspect that they probably didn't go into. But whatever she experienced with her mom, which went unsaid, <laughs> uh, obviously she saw. It. Do you remember the scene where she they're in the motel? She gets up at nighttime and she goes in the bathroom and she's putting on perfume and she's like posing. Yeah. And and that whole thing is and she's looking at a picture of her mom and her mom is posing that way. So she kind of had it in her head, like what the game was already. And she was so actually it's a lot better that she was going into con games, maybe, than she was the game that her mom was, because I who knows. And, and that's very true. I think that's her mom was true. her mom was pro very likely probably a hooker. You know? Well, it seems like she knew that the, yeah. the question she was asking Moses. Yeah. It, yeah, it sounds like she sort of had an inkling of that, and then later in the movie, she had no problem pimping Trixie out. Oh yeah, oh that was that was yeah, but that was actually like, to get that was actually that was not that was actually to get rid of the woman. She wanted that woman it, out. And I get it, yeah. but it it was it was for Addie's personal gain. Oh, absolutely. Regardless of whether it was for money or not. Of course. Of course. And just that at nine, at nine years old, you're yeah. pulling something like that. Yeah. It's that was horrifying to me. I'm well, sorry. I, again, you you got a kid that obviously is scarred, so they're willing to do stuff that a normal she said she's nine in the mm -hmm. movie. And uh, I think she was ten in real life, but yeah, she she certainly looked nine. And um and just her 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 um, her worldly wisdom was part of the humor and part of the fun of the movie because she kept doing things that you were like, oh my god, I can't believe this kid is doing this. And uh, I mean, you know, when they got into the trouble with the liquor, when when they were, uh, she, she's actually the one she spots the guy trading money, and and she's watching the guy. Ryan O'Neill is clueless. 
the con man is sitting there on the porch, just kind of like chilling. And she's like, look at this, like, look, what, look, look what's going on behind you. And he goes, what, what? And, and she's telling him these two are exchanging money. And, uh, and he's like, well, let's check it out. And that's how they end up with the, in trouble with the liquor. I mean, they establish early on, she is clearly the one in control. Yeah. Yeah. But, but well, even her, even her level of manipulation. Oh my God. As a yeah. nine year old. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, it's, it's hysterical. I mean, some of the stuff, uh, how she manipulates him, you know, like, you know, even when they were, even when they were sitting there in the, uh, in the diner and, uh, and she starts, uh, she starts saying, you know, you owe me money because he did collect. That's another thing is yeah. that was the first thing he did with her was he went and collected money off of, uh, off of the, uh, that one guy there. And, and she picks right up on, oh yeah, that was my, that was, <laughs> that was my, uh, that was my money. All right. You know, you owe me money from that. And he's like, well, yeah, I, 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 uh, I'm taking you across country. And she's like, you still owe me money. And <laughs> so she's talking real loud in the place and everybody's starting to look over and he realizes, wow, this kid's something else. <laughs> he can't, he can't, uh, he can't control her. She's controlling him. But <laughs> now, now one super positive thing I can say yes. about this movie is it is gorgeous. Oh yeah, absolutely. The shots are amazing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's probably, it's probably uh, Bogdanovich's finest hour. I mean, he's, mm -hmm. he has made some turkeys as well as some really fine movies, but this is, this is, I think his finest hour. I, I can't think of a better film that Bogdanovich did. So I, the, it's beautifully shot. The fact that it's in black and white, it, it really stands out. It not, looks like not a just black film. and white. What's that? Not just black and white. He had the help of a master on this one. Okay. Orson Welles. Oh, I didn't know, know Orson Welles was involved. I yeah, really he, Bogdanovich considered Orson Welles a mentor. Yeah, yeah. And he's the one that suggested For that better this worse. be filmed in <laughs> yeah. black and white yeah. with a red lens filter. Oh, okay. Because okay. I guess it provides better contrast, so it's a sharper picture. Yeah. Yep, and they certainly have that. I mean, you can definitely see that when you're when you're watching that. Uh, speaking of Criterion, uh, this is a this is a film that does have a Criterion edition, and it's it's that's a beautiful you know version of it. But no, it's um, it is it's wonderfully shot. I think they really had the um, you know they really had it down dead for whether it's costumes and and just you know anything anything with uh, the uh, the period. Uh, piece it, it, it's it's done extremely well i didn't see any clear mistakes you look at films a lot of times nowadays that, that are shot as a period piece and you want you see something and you go ah, that wasn't they, they didn't have that back then or whatever <laughs> so yeah it's 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 again it is it's wonderfully shot now the the attention to detail is amazing yeah i was reading into this and it turns out bogdanovich used something called deep focus cinematography Okay. That, yeah. And this is a, a, a method of producing shots where the foreground, the midground, and the background are all in focus. Right, right. And so the viewer, the person watching the movie, has so much to take in. Huh. It, I, it, it results in a much more dynamic shot. Yeah. Well, and you can actually, I, I mean, I'm some of the scenes I'm pulling up, you can kind of see that. You, you don't see the you see a clear this shot here. You see a clear shot of her face, and the background is actually very much mm -hmm. in focus. It's it's mm -hmm. uh, it, you know that that stands out right there. That you know what you're talking about. But no, it's um, it not only is it wonderfully shot, but um, the pacing is like you know it's it's spot on. Uh, you you really don't feel like when you're watching this, you don't feel like you're watching uh, you know a movie that's dragging on. It's a you know, it's a movie that just moves along and you're, you're feeling, you're feeling every scene. There's not, there's really not a, like a, a slow scene in this film. No, it's a very economical film. Every shot counts. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I, I don't know, do you, do you know what the budget was in this film? Because it doesn't look like they probably, um, they, they had to like really <laughs> shoot the moon for the, 
for the budget. Uh, you know, budget of two point five million. Wow, wow, wow. That's <laughs> yeah. That's uh, that's more than because back then that was uh, what year was that? Was it nineteen seventy or seventy three? Seventy three. Wow, that's later than I thought it was. Um, but I mean, shooting that period piece, like the that costuming, yeah, those props didn't come easy. No. Well, they never do with a with a film like that. It's, um, I mean, first of all, um, whatever you're shooting for location, you really have to scout your locations because you can't have a super highway in the background when it's the 1930s. Um, you, um, you, you, whatever the buildings are, they have to look like the built buildings from the time. And then a, cars and costuming, that's a huge part of the budget yep. right there. And yep. then there's the set pieces, the, you know, I mean, uh, probably it was a little bit easier back in 68 to, <laughs> to go into, uh, you know, shops and, and pick up, pick up like 1920s, 1930s furniture and things like that. But it's still, you know, it's not easy. So to co costume and costume correctly. Um, the, Those the costume, cars. What's that? Those cars. I mean, I think oh, he yeah. starts out with a Ford Model A. Yeah, yeah. And it's not supposed to be that great, so it doesn't matter so much. Yeah. When he buys that new car, yeah, press Trixie, uh, Madeline Kahn's character, oh, I, and that's another thing. Madeline Kahn being in this film, that's a that right there. I love Madeline Kahn, and the very fact that she's in this film that that says so so much for the movie because it's. It's, I mean, that, it's a great movie uh, because she of her. She won an too. Academy Award for this as well. What's that? I think she won an Academy Award for this as well. Did she? Did she? I, I wasn't even aware of that, but I think she won the lead. Yeah. And, yeah. and even she said that Tatum O'Neill should have gotten it. Right, right. Well, um, I don't know. She was, <laughs> she was fantastic in the movie. She wasn't. She didn't. She wasn't in the film for a huge amount of time. No, nope. the the time she was in it <laughs> was was really great. And I, I I mean, her character was so funny and so you know so watchable when she was on the screen. Mm -hmm. but, and the very fact that she came from that from that carnival too, it was. <laughs> and, and she was very real. Yes, I mean, I mean, her monologue to Tatum O'Neill. Yeah, when she's like, look. Here's yeah. the situation. Can we yeah. work this out? Yeah. You know, it was like, okay, let's drop all pretense. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, that was a great scene. That was phenomenal. Yeah. Well, and she really, I mean, she kind of, uh, she, she kind of like had to, she really had to uh, confess what, 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 what she was about and what she needed. She was like, look, honey, I, like I, I, I don't usually last long in relation. You don't have, you wouldn't even have me around for very long. So just like, can we just like work together for that? you know for the well, time I, here. I think game recognizes game yes yep and tatum o'neill kind of like after that she did kind of like for at least for a little while she kind of said all right okay i'll play along but she uh <laughs> but she did really didn't want uh <laughs> madeline khan in the in the background there so she or the foreground so she made sure she <laughs> sabotaged that but yeah that uh that in itself was hysterical how she how how uh, her and uh, I think I think she was P P J Johnson was yeah like the um, image like yeah she and she got she uh, she was like hired uh, by Madeline Kahn and, and she goes she's not even paying me <laughs> so <laughs> so that was the other thing and she was just kind of stuck with her but um, but yeah that's kind of them plotting uh, the demise of Madeline Kahn because they certainly got rid of her mm -hmm. and now that was another thing. Um, the hotel, the hotel clerk, um, <laughs> he was hysterical in this role, and he was he was so sleazy and so like he was perfect, perfect like phony sleazy. Oh, he, he was just, so sleazy. Oh yeah, from his smile to you know just a little sneer, and uh, that was another thing that was funny too was, um, you know the, I, I won't call her a maid, but the, uh, P.J. Johnson, she says to Tatum O'Neill. Um, you know that he's probably going to kill that guy, and so right away Tatum O'Neill's like, "Oh no!" Like she, because he doesn't want Brian O'Neill getting in trouble. But um, but he instead he's just like, "Let's get out of here." <laughs> yeah. 
but um, no, it was like I said, the whole that whole scene, everything from her her sending the guy up to to the room and and the and just like you know the the little notes that they passed with the guy saying you know he was going to exchange money and there was you know the, just the, that whole scene was just incredible, very funny. But but so I mean, this is this is a tragedy for me is that. So many things worked in this film. The cast was amazing, cinematography yeah. amazing, yeah, costuming, pacing, acting, yeah, all great. These humans are so deeply flawed, you can't help but feel absolutely. But as, as humans will as humans will be, Dom, as humans will be, because but that it's is, hard to watch. Yeah, it, it's like like I I know you're trying to make me feel good. This yeah. is hard to watch. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, in in some ways, the humans are so awful that it actually that is part. First of all, it's part of the comedy, and second of all, it probably should make you feel a little bit <laughs> a little better about yourself because at least I'm not like those people. <laughs> so, and and uh, there's there's no redemption. Like uh, like I mean, take take another Tatum O'Neill an O'Neill film, yeah. The Bad News Bears. Mm-hmm. You know, here's a grouchy with grouchy the great Walter, Walter Matthau. Matthau. Yeah, you know that comes around, feels love, becomes warmer at the yeah. end of it. Yeah, uh, that doesn't happen in this movie. Well, I the thing they I got off think, being the yeah. same people they are. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. And the 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 big thing I got out of the end of it that I think was probably something that if you're going to take away something that made you feel better is just the very fact that because he, his intention was to drop her with her uncle and, and aunt, I guess, aunt by marriage and, um, and then leave. And he actually stopped his vehicle mm -hmm. and you could tell he was actually sitting there. It was, it was actually bothering him. It's not sad, but it's actually bothering him. He's leaving the kid his vehicle was not broken down at that time. He just stopped and he was mm -hmm. sitting by the side of the road, almost like he figures to himself, this kid's going to come back and follow me. And sure enough, damned if you don't see her come running down the road behind him. And he's protesting and saying, I told you, you can't ride with me anymore. And she's yelling about you owe me the 200. And, um, and of course, um, you know, you, he just throws his hat on the ground because he knows damn well <laughs> that that kid is going to get in the car with him and mm -hmm. they're a pair and they're going to continue their con game and whatever dysfunctional relationship was there. Um, he actually, I think he actually was starting to feel like, okay, this kid's my, my partner, sort of like a daughter. And again, I mean, he probably was wondering in the back of his mind, maybe this kid is mine. <laughs> you know, I mean, it could very well have been. So, um, like I said, uh, it's I I still found a little bit of sweetness in the story. I, maybe it's because I I tend to look for that a little bit, but uh, mm. but I did find uh, I'm cynical, but I, I I did find some sweetness in that. And the other thing is, I love how the kid was catching on to the money game, like when they go into a store or something like that, and how she was she was helping to uh, you know swindle dollars and. Uh, that was hysterical to me that, you know, she would actually, you know, she, she start she did it at a cash register. I gave you a 20 and the woman's going, no, no, honey, I didn't get, you didn't give me a 20. And, <laughs> and uh, of course, Ryan O'Neill had been in there a few minutes before and, and dropped a 20 that had writing on it, which made it look like, yeah, she could prove it. So that was, that was an amazing con. Yeah, you know what? it was, it was. And, and that's the thing they, they did have, she actually took to that, she was doing it at the carnival, if you remember. She was walking around, you know, and and having like saying, "Hey, can you make change for a five? And and then you know, she she was real fast with money. The kid was that, obviously. That, that's called the quick change scam, by yeah. the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you study con games, that yeah. actually has a name. See, that's and that's another thing. Again, one of the reasons why I love the movie. Um, I love con movies. Um, you know. There's only been there's only uh, House of Games was one, uh, you know. There's um, well, I mean, there's the Sting. Yes. Oh yeah. Which, which we're gonna talk at some point about oh, at some point. Of course. 
and that is a fun movie. That's that's another another great cast movie. You know, um, Ocean's uh, Eleven, The Italian Job. Now you yeah. see. So yeah, the uh, con game movies are a lot of fun. They are, and, and this is one of those. I, I I feel this one easily fits into the category of you know great con game movies. So it's um, it, it's maybe a little bit less of a, a a con game sometimes than just like scraping by by the <laughs> you know by the skin of their teeth. But some of the cons are are absolutely fantastic. Well, and again. They didn't focus on the cons. Yeah. Like no. they focused on the people. Yeah. 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 It's very much a it's very much a relationship movie uh with the kid and and Ryan O'Neill. And uh that's that's a huge part of it and, and what grows into a, a bond between them, however dysfunctional, but it but it <laughs> does grow. So and, and again, what a cast. And if you look right above my head there, who is that you see but Randy Quaid? Oh yeah, another Randy Quaid movie. Yes, and I mean, you know, you were you were saying when we were when we uh, reviewed Christmas Vacation, you were talking about how many movies that the guy showed up in, and and sure enough, he shows up in many uh, uh, films, and this is one. And look how young he is here. I I've never seen him this young. Yeah, that was actually I think that what might have been his second film. Um, he had done a. Uh, I'm trying to think what the first one was. He he actually he started out in two or three great great movies, including this one, and um, and then after that he kind of like his his parts were kind of like you know less. Uh, <laughs> the, the, he started taking lesser roles. Let's put it that way. But um, but this one here, I mean, he had a again he had a small part in this one, but look how he stood out and and. <laughs> And one of the things that I thought was hysterical was the fight scene because this came from out of the blue. I'm like a wrestling match. Yes, really. And and my my first thought was he's going to kick your ass, <laughs> right? You know, I mean, he was he was huge, and uh, but, but Ryan O'Neill again obviously came from a rough background and knew what he was doing. But um, but yeah, yeah. nothing that you saw in the movie uh, represented him as a fighter. Of no, any not type. at all. Not at all. In fact, he kind of shows that he's not that much of a fighter, but he is somebody that can surprise you sometimes. And he kind of surprised Randy Quaid in that fight. But it's funny because Tatum O'Neill goes, he's going to kill you. <laughs> she was she, her immediate thought was, man, this guy is going to annihilate you. Uh, it went for, and that's really what I thought the first time I saw the movie. Oh, same here. You know, but, uh, and what was really funny was how um, they didn't, they really didn't want the car or they acted like they didn't want the car. And then, uh, and then when they, when they did finally get the car, then they were all over it. They were jumping around like, oh, we got the car, you know, but, um, but yeah, like I said, it, it terrific movie, terrific cast. And um, and that was just one more little nice piece of trivia there, Randy Quaid, you know. <laughs> so so right after I saw this movie, yes, I had to go track down the Simpsons episode that was based on this movie. <laughs> In yeah, season I, twelve, they do that? they do an episode called the Great Money Caper. Oh wow! Okay, and it features Homer and Bart. Going around and doing these calls. Really? really? Wow. Wow. Um, yeah, I um <laughs> that's that's actually uh that's something I really wasn't because I, I, I watched The Simpsons every every once in a while. I have watched it, but it has um, I haven't been like a huge, huge Simpson fan. I mean I I'll watch it periodically. Well let's but... face it, like like I I have not seen a good episode in the past few years. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, their, their it, well, old stuff is great. Yeah. The problem, I think, anytime you have any show, whether it's a cartoon like that, of that kind, and it was great quality cartoon, but um, I won't just even call it a, a regular cartoon because it's it's a series that actually has had, you know, a lot of fun with with day-to-day -day stuff and and a lot of, you know, a lot of things that are just considered part of <laughs> part of daily life. But 
Well, and, also um, a lot of fun joking about pop culture like this. Yeah, well, that's it. It's it's all about pop culture. But um, but yeah, uh, and you know, talking about pop culture and and things that parodied uh, Paper Moon, um, anybody that has ever looked at or read uh, Mad Magazine, um, I remember when I was young, because I used to always buy Mad Magazine, most people my age did, and um, I I wish I had, actually, I'd love to just have an online collection of it, but um, but Mad Magazine did a great feature of this movie, and they, it was funny. It was very funny. If you have access to Mad Magazine... I will have to try and track that down. Track it down, because it's very funny, and they even make a few jokes about... Uh, about how unfunny the film is and things like, you know, they, they, it's like real, it's, you know, Mad Magazine. They, they not only parody, but they make fun of, you know, the, the characters and the actors and everything else. Uh, they, they love to, uh, they love to like go back and forth between the story they're writing, like dealing with the, what the movie is and then like jumping right out of it and saying, well, you're not, you're a terrible actor, you know, and that's why you're in this movie or, whatever so like i said it's it's a pretty funny parody of of the movie so check it out if you can okay here's the craziest trivia trivia i found about the movie okay have you seen the disney plus series um obi-wan kenobi no no not at all okay so uh, obviously as the title would imply it follows the mate <laughs> one of the characters from star wars obi-wan kenobi yeah and his early relationship with Princess Leia. Oh, really? And the head writer of that show huh. has said that they modeled that relationship yeah. on the relationship between Tatum O'Neill and Ryan O'Neill in this movie. Wow, really? Wow. Yes. That's that's hysterical. No, I did not know that at all. <laughs> so now I, I have to go back and watch that just, <laughs> just to yeah. see. Yeah, I'm going to have to check it out myself. <laughs> myself now that's that's very funny no i had no idea about that <laughs> yeah that's an odd that's a real odd piece of trivia but, <laughs> but so you know. so this this was an extremely influential move yeah 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 absolutely <laughs> no it, and um again um just um just the very fact that a lot of a lot of the period movies afterwards i think did kind of follow you know, a lot, and, and, um, and as far as like, um, you know, con game movies, even, uh, you can see it and you can see it even in aspects of like, Oh brother, where art thou? You know, you, you see it in a lot of movies where, uh, you know, you can tell they, they kind of, they kind of have copied aspects of it. It's, uh, it, to me, it is a, a perfectly good example of, you know, a, a movie that, People have looked at and, and and said, "Let's do, let's do a you know another one." It's again great period piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, that, yeah, that but, may be a good place to wrap this up. Yep, yeah, I think we, I think we've kind of, I think we've kind of come to, come to the end of this. But uh, but yeah, like I said, this this definitely was a a fun one for me. Um, and um, I, I, like I said, I, I came away with it at the end, feeling like, uh, yeah, as dysfunctional as the characters were, um, they, and there they stand. It's a, you know, last scene of the movie. I felt like uh, there was, if not redemption, <laughs> there was, uh, there was at least a, two characters that had kind of bonded, and you know, they probably were going to be if they didn't get arrested <laughs> and her put into her a reformatory and him in jail, they probably were going to be together for a long time. So, um, Well, in the book that this movie was based on, they ultimately graduate to the big leagues and start conning like millionaires. Yeah. Well, I could, to tell you the truth, I could actually see that happening with her help. Him on his own is, he was always going to be a small time character that was in and out of trouble with her help because she was so in damn intelligent i do believe that actually as, as you know as she got better at her game and she was getting better pretty quickly 
um, I could see that she could drag him into like doing much more elaborate, much better cons, you know. She, she was gonna... definitely the big star. Yes. And not just her character of that of that con team, yeah, but also of the movie itself. In every way, she yeah. kind of outshadowed everyone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, uh, she absolutely deserved her Academy Award. I think she was, you know, terrific. And to tell you the truth, I, I would say the saddest thing that I take away from this, and that is, I think she could have been a, a bigger star than she was. She had chops, and instead, as she matured, um, you know, like like I said, I I know her best for Little Darlings as mm -hmm. being the next movie that I know her from, and you know, she was the a, a cute teen what or i don't know i guess late 20s or probably when she was in little darlings i don't know maybe maybe uh around the same age christy mcnichol was in that movie yeah but, yeah um, but it's sad that like she kind of like was after she did that movie she was kind of like you know uh, stereotyped as, as that kind of a character and so she was always playing like you know either troubled kids or like or like well, I mean, a sexy character or whatever, you know. She she didn't totally leave the screen. She was on um uh what was it? She was on Sex in the City. Yeah. Briefly. She yeah. was on oh the Dennis Leary Fire Department. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Rescue Me. Yeah, that, and that actually I really liked that. That was a good series, I thought. Yeah. But, but yes, given that she got an Academy Award at 10 years old. Yeah. Yeah, that she sort of just faded away from acting, just sort well, of lost interest. Yeah, because when you talking to me, compare that to something like Elizabeth Taylor in National Velvet, when she was you know a, a young actor that that um, that you know went did go on to, and I don't think to tell you the truth for all of Elizabeth Taylor's beauty, I don't think that her acting talents. I, I could be scandalized for this, but. But I don't think her acting talents were equal to her beauty. I think Tatum O'Neill, I think her had real good acting talents. And had they been, uh, you know, maybe it had her father, maybe, because I think in some ways her father, I heard, heard this as one of the things about uh, him and her was that he was actually kind of jealous of his kid's success. So um, so I don't know, he, he could have maybe helped to further her career. Um, you know, and use some of his own influence to make sure her she was getting the right roles and more roles as she went on. So again, like I said, I I I'd said the saddest thing is I I wish that she had you know done bigger things than she did, but she uh, obviously had the chops and and great talent. So yeah, to 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 anyone watching out there, if you haven't seen Paper Moon, it's worth watching just to see Tay O'Neill's performance. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. It, and there's many reasons to watch this movie. It's, but that's certainly one of them. Um, absolutely. Certainly one of them. And, and, and you look at it, look at, look at the way this is filmed. It's just beautifully done. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you, you owe it to yourself to watch it. And um, yeah, that probably does wrap it up. I have to say it, please like, and subscribe if you would. I hope you enjoyed watching this with us. We certainly had fun. I did. I hope Dom did. Oh, and, I love it. Love yeah. it. And, and it, I'm the next pick up. Yeah, next you are. It's my your, choice. So your pick is next. Stay tuned. Um, uh, hopefully I've got something crazy in mind. <laughs> good, good. That that would be that would be absolutely fantastic if you come up with something crazy. And I, I believe me, I keep thinking of different ones. So that guys, please stay with us because um, there's no shortage of fun movies. Um, we want to do more like of everything from great movies to to really bad b movies so oh i've got some horrible ones picked well, out nice, <laughs> nice i love a bad i love a bad b movie and so it, you guys if you're watching this be prepared to see some bad ones too so, We're bad, all over the map bad good ones you know ones we consider to be fun for whatever reason but uh dom uh great session there we we had a great talk great uh, as always love talking with you man yeah yeah, uh, same here. But um, that was our first one for the new year. I hope everyone liked it. And uh, Dom's Dom's pick is next. So see you guys next time. Yeah, see you next it's, week. It's been yeah, see you next week. It's been great. But um, 
All right. Take care, guys.